Right, welcome back to our machine learning course. Uh, we continue uh, our lecture on Bayesian learning. In the previous lecture, we saw what Bayesian models are. Now we're going to look at the simplest example of a Bayesian model, which is naive Bayes. So remember that uh, Bayesian models want to give you the posterior probability of a certain event or class C given an observation X. Right? So I do observation X. Okay, what is now the chance that uh, I have a certain class C? To, to compute it, I use base rule. So this posterior probability C given X is my likelihood X given C times my prior uh, probability of C, of C at all. Before, so the probability of, of C occurring without looking at the data. And then um, P of X, which is a normalizer, which makes sure that this probability is between zero and one. Okay, now, how hard is it to compute this guy? Well, x in this case is a vector. Right? So x is actually something like x1, x2, x3. And say that I want to predict, for instance, the chance that's going to rain. So c is, uh, this is rain or sun. And x are some observations like the temperature, humidity, air pressure. Right? So I give these things, and from this I want to compute the probability that it's going to rain given these observations. Right? At some point, I measure temperature, humidity, air pressure, and then I compute the probability is going to rain, isn't that? Okay. Um, well, computing this guy is going to be quite complex because all of, of my variables, like temperature and humidity, they're very likely dependent on each other, right? So if temperature is high, then humidity may be higher as well, right? So I can't just multiply the, the probability of observing uh, temperature 20 degrees uh, times probability of humidity being 90% because they depend on each other. Right? So computing this can be very ex expensive and very complex. And it's going to be intractable, intract intractable for large data sets. So I can solve that by naively assuming that all my features are conditionally independent. Right, that would mean that humidity can be anything given temperature, right? So it can be 20 degrees and humidity can be anything depending on that. So it's completely independent on the other variables. In that case, I can simply uh, multiply uh, my probability, my, my likelihoods for each uh, variable independently from each other, right? So this is just, so say I want to predict uh, the chance that it rains, probability of um, sorry probability of making the observations like high temperature high humidity given that it rains well that's going to be the likelihood that um, that I have temperature 20 degrees given that it rains times the temperature to the probability that um, the, uh, the humidity is 90 percent given that it rains and so on so I, I can compute this easily and then from that, I can compute this guy. I can also easily compute the chance that it, ra that it rains independently from any temperature or humidity, right? from any observations. And this, this I can also easily compute. So if I do this, then if I make this assumption, then this is going to be very fast. And the only thing we need to do is to ex extract some statistics to, I basically have to store these guys into a table and then I can compute this. Right. So let's see how that works. <clears throat> so in this case I have an example of my friend who wants to play golf. Um, so I ask him multiple times or her multiple times whether he or she wants to play golf and I'm going to remember whether it was sunny, overcast or rainy. I'm sort of cheating here because I only have one variable x, y. Um, so I can't really demonstrate that 
is not, this assumption is really naive, but this is basically just to show you how the calculations work. Okay, and this is easier if I can do this with a single table. Um, it says, I want to predict that my friend wants to play golf given that it's sunny, right? So I look outside, I see it's sunny, I will now want to predict the probability that my friends will say yes. Okay, um, to do that, I, I have to compute the probability that uh, it's sunny given yes. Sorry, yes. Times probability that my friend says yes. Divided that the probability that it is sunny. Okay. Okay. Um, I this is my table of my frequencies. So I um, have asked my friend fourteen times, and of these nine times, my friend said yes. Three times was sunny. Four times overcast. Two times rainy. Five times my friend said no. Two times was sunny, and two times was rainy. Okay, from this I can compute my likelihoods. So the probability that my friend says yes, given that it's sunny, well, there were three examples out of nine, so that's three out of nine. And luckily, the same way I can compute all, all of these guys. Okay. I can also compute the probability that it's sunny. Well, there were five cases out of 14 observations that were sunny, so that probability is about 36%. Right, so it's 36% that it's sunny. Um, so probably in the Netherlands, um, not in uh, the, the tropics. And I can also compute my prior. What's the probability that my friend says yes before I look at the sky? Well, that's going to be 64%. So my friend likes to play golf. Okay, now I can put everything together. The probability that it's sunny given yes was 0.33. My prior was 64% divided by the chance that it's sunny overall, that's going to be 36%. And the final posterior probability is going to be 60%. Right? So that's how it works. So I just have to store this table in memory um, and then I can make all kinds of predictions very quickly. Okay, what happens if my data is numeric? Well, then I have to make some assumptions about the distribution. And I'm going to assume that my data is Gaussian distributed, otherwise it doesn't work. <laughs> so uh, say I have some variable, um, like actually like before, um, I had the example of temperature, right? So I have, I have temperature, And I can make some observations about the temperature. So I have a numerical variable x1, which represents the temperature. Sorry about my humble writing. Um, and I make some observations. So say, well, it can be 20. So I make observation 20, there's some observation of 19, 21, some more. Sometimes it's colder. Let's, let's assume it's summer, and this is nicely. This, Distributed around here. Right, so I made observations, and if I look at that, well, say that these are the observations of last month. If I look at that, I can say, well, this is going to be Gaussian distributed. I made that assumption. Right? So I, I don't really know that. I'm just going to assume that it is. Right? So then I only need to compute the mean of these guys, that's going to be here. I compute the variance, and from that I have the standard deviation, so I also know the shape of this distribution, which is a Gaussian around the mean, say 20, temperature of 20 degrees Celsius, okay? <clears throat> yeah, so I assume that the data is distributed, and all the other guys, the, the, the air humidity and so on, is also going to be um, Gaussian distributed. So for every feature, I compute the mean, and standard deviation, and from that I know my probability, which is going to be uh, a Gaussian distribution, which we know looks like this. So for any point in x, so say x, we have one value for x1, uh, and say this is like 22, I can now compute the probability, the probability that x is 22 uh, given 
Um, oh yeah, so I do this per I do this per per class. So say classes is raining, right? I can do this for all the cases where it was raining. I can do another one for the cases where it was not raining. And well, maybe in those cases, it was a bit warmer. So somewhere over here. And my mean is a bit higher. So my mean is around 21. And I again have the distribution around that. Okay, so the probability that my temperature is 21, given that uh, it's rainy, because this distribution belongs to the glass rain, right? I can look that up, I can compute that, and it's going to be this value here, right? Probability of, um, the probability of x is 22, given not raining. Well, that's going to be this value. So it's going to be higher. Right? It's going to be a little bit higher for not raining than for rain. Okay? Uh, and that's all I need to know. So now I can, again, um, plug in base rule. So the probability that it's raining, given that my temperature is... 22 degrees, right? That's going to be the probability uh, that my temperature is 22 degrees given that it's raining. That's this probability here. Uh, times the probability that it's raining times the, the, the normalizing constant here. The probability that the temperature is 22 overall. Okay, and then, then I can again make all kinds of observations. Right? So in this figure you see at class A, this can be rain, and this could be not rain, and you see that the class not rain has a, a higher mean and it's more like denser, well, um, a narrower distribution around the mean. <coughs> and so for every point x, I can now compute probability for uh, for not rain and probability for rain. Okay, that's it. What does Snape what what does Gaussian Snape base look like? Well, it's going to be a Gaussian, not surprisingly. Um, so this is how it looks like for different kind of plots. So it's going to try to fit a Gaussian in these points, right? So uh, it wants to have high probability for the blue points and very low probability for the red points. So it's going to learn a Gaussian that looks a bit like this. Oops. Like this. So it's it's an approximation. It's a a plus uh, In this case, where you have this donut shape, then it will learn probability here. Again, this is quite hard. It does its best to do that. Uh, it's not so good at 70% accuracy. And for this case, where you have these two blobs, it again learns something like this, and you get 92% accuracy, 95% accuracy. Okay. That's what Nyabase looks like. There are a few other uh, native base classifiers you can use uh, when your data is not Gaussian distributed. For instance, say that your data is about coin tosses, right? binary data, zero ones. Then you can use the Bernier distribution. Uh, so use that whenever uh, your, your data is binary, like zeros and ones. Whenever your data is about count data, like one, five, two, whatever, like a bag of words where you count a number of words, for instance, uh, in that case, you can use the multinomial database. So they're the same ID, but instead of using, well, assuming a Gaussian distribution, I assume 
uh, Bernier distribution in the case of zero one, one and multinomial distribution in the case of count data. Now, we can actually expressly model. So before in A-Base, we were assuming that all of the features are uh, independent from each other. What if we know beforehand that some are not? Then we can model that in what's called a Bayesian network. So in this example here, it's a very classical example. I want to predict. I want to, yeah, uh, predict whether the, the grass is wet. Um, I have some inputs, uh, including whether or not it's cloudy. All right. So well, if it's cloudy, that may affect the chance the grass is wet, but not directly, um, because the grass can also be wet if the sprinkler is on or when it rains. Now, cloudiness affects both of them. If it's cloudy, then there's a high probability of rain and then a very low probability of that the sprinklers are on. Right? And so these edges represent that, um, that there's a conditional dependency. So cloudy has, a, has an effect on sprinkler and sprinkler has an effect on the wet grass. Okay. And so if I do that, then I can again build these tables and, and, and compute uh, base rule. So I can apply base rule to it. Um, this graph structure either has to be designed manually, so you have to look at your data and then design this manually, or you can also learn it. There's uh, search methods that kind of search um, the space of all possible graphs to find the graph that gives you the best performance. It's sort of expensive and can be pretty hard though. But yeah, if you can do it, then this is, it's nice, right? Because this, this is model, again, it gives you probabilities, right? And probabilities are very nice to have. Uh, and it, it also gives you interpretability. You could look at the, the model and use that to make predictions, right? So if, you, if it tells you, well, there's 6% chance it's going to rain, then you can also look at, well, the probability is currently of sprinkler and raining, and that helps you explain the prediction of the model, right? So it's, it's a very useful technique for that as well.